Um, how was your day today, John DCQR, reporting from somewhere in Toronto, Canada? And today I'm going to do a second chapter of the Nazi Communist International called Stipem, the Real Bulgarian Connection. What I'm going, yep, what I'm going to do in this series is not necessarily in chronological order, but I will continue to post topics on the whole thing. Now let us start. On Tuesday, November 23rd, 1982, an international law enforcement team under the directions of Italian magistrate Carlo Palermo of Trento carried out a series of arrests of individuals responsible for running the Milan Center of the biggest arms dealing network in the world. Shades of Iran, Contra, and the current bank scandal involved in the Bank of America bran branch, Wachovia. According to Palermo and other Trento magistrates, at a press conference the following day, the eight arrests marked a dramatic climax of a three-year investigation during which it was discovered that the Milan-based firm Astipam International Transports was the channel through which huge quantities of arms were shipped to bands of terrorists and integrists throughout the Middle East. The standard form of barter for the arms, hashish, heroin, and other drugs principally produced in the Golden Crescent region of Iran, Pakistan, and Afghanistan. Yes, you know, it's pretty much the same thing that's happening today. By the time the dust had settled on the Stipan bust, more had been unearthed than even a multi-billion dollar arms for dopering. At the very heart of the Stipam operation was the arrangement between top government and family channels in the east and west to share in the revenues and political power of Dope Inc. As the, as the direct result of the Stipam bust, the Bulgarian connection to the assassination plot against Pope John Paul II was demonstrated. As a result of the Stipam revelations, the marriage between the ruling families of the East, such as Bulgaria's Zivkov dynasty and the oligarchical Fondi of Central Europe and Britain, and of course America, such as the Braganza clan and the Duke of Kent, most disgustingly flaunted in the black market bazaars of Varna, Easton, Bull, Sofia, Palermo, Trieste, and London. Weaving in and out of this mosaic of guns, narcotics, and political assassins, we find the ever-present shadow of the Nazi Communist International. And another person... That should be mentioned and note is Larry Abramoff. He was involved, not only was involved in the Stipam International Transport, but he was also involved in all the other arms and drug scandals, which some of it came out under the guise of Plame Gate. And Abramoff was convicted in around 2006. But that's a topic for another discussion. The, his, the history of the case. An undated report issued in the fall of 1984 by the chief of the strategic intelligence section of the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration provides a history of the Stipam International Transport case and the plot to assassinate Pope John Paul II. According to the document, the involvement of the People's Republic of Bulgaria in international narcotics trafficking, a high-level defector from the Bulgarian State Security Service, KDS, codenamed Sherdlev, S-V-E-R-D-L-E-V, had told 
U.S. intelligence of a 1967 meeting in Moscow, the Warsaw Pact Security Service chiefs to develop plans to exploit and hasten the inherent corruption of Western society. It isn't that, you know, the West needed much help. Look at the current financial mess today. A subsequent meeting of KDS officials in Sofia, Bulgaria, established a three-year action plan to implement the exploitation. According to a... Sh- uh, sh- uh, sh- sh- uh, uh, I'm having trouble pronouncing. Sir sh- Lev, a KDS... Directive was issued on June 1970 assessing the status of the East Bloc plan to destabilize Western society through the narcotics trade. How would this Moscow ordered opium war be carried out? According to the same DEA document in 1968 through the Bulgarian government funded Kintex, the official import export agency of the communist state of course it would late that that company would later be called globus but let's you know dis- yeah, let's discuss the detail in the report kintex is structured as an umbrella organization which orchestrates the trafficking of contraband through bulgaria Kintex had has been identified as the principal narcotics and weapons shipping agency other government agencies have been identified as operating in conjunction with Kintex, prim- primarily as distribution outlets. Each of these agencies reportedly is headed by Bulgarian state security officials. Hmm. The Americans have the same cut, you know, cut out organization. That involves arms and dope. It just happens to be called Israel. But moving on. Among the distribution outlets identified by the U.S., Turkish, and Italian authorities were Intercommerce, DAP EK, and Balkan Tours. Balkan Tours, the official Bulgarian news bureau, gained instant notoriety on on November 25, 1982 just two days after the Stipam raid, when Sergei Ivan, Ivanov Antonov, an official of Bulgarian Airlines, posted as the deputy director of, of the office of Balkan Tours in Rome, was arrested by Italian magistrate Alerio Martella and charged in a conspiracy to assassinate the Pope. From its inception, Kintex went about implementing its criminal mandate with a degree of thoroughness and ruthlessness that marks the East Bloc security services. Lists of sanctioned clients in the West, armed smuggling rings, narcotics trafficking organizations, and terrorist cells banning the neo-Nazi right to the anarchist left were accumulated and screened. Preferred safe locations, usually nondescript hotels and bars in Sofia, were established as havens for black market transactions. Evidence suggests that Ken Texas worldwide dope for arms dealing were run top down through a chain of command running back to the Dershinsky Ders- uh, Square headquarters of the Soviet KGB in Moscow. And you could probably m- trace it down the Langley in Virginia, which I will talk about shortly. Kentex reportedly fell under the jurisdiction of the first directorate of the KDS, headed by G- Colonel General Grigor Shopov. The first directorate was responsible for all foreign domestic intelligence operations, including terrorism. A a candidate member of the Bulgarian Communist Party Central Committee, Radoslav Tordorov, 
was appointed Ken Texas Director General. According to accounts of a drug smuggler working for Ken Tex, the boss of contraband operations was a high-ranking KDS officer named Terziev, whose deputy, Colonel Ivan, was responsible for all heroin and mer- morphine purchases and sales. Circumstantial evidence suggests that the sha- shadowy Colonel Ivan may be Ivan Slavkov, the son-in-law of Bulgarian Premier Todor Zivkov and the widower of Lyudmila Zivkova, herself a former member of the Bulgarian Communist Party Central Committee, and an international cult heroine described by one observer as a latter-day Madame Blavatsky, the Russian founder of the occult Golden Dawn movement. And she certainly had, yes, and predictably, she probably, just like Blavatsky, she probably had connections to uh, British and Russian intelligence or Masonic handlers, but that, w- that would be a topic for another discussion. The former director of Bulgarian television and head of the Bulgarian National Olympics Committee, Slavkov, is widely identified as the liaison between Kintex and the drug mafias of Latin America and the Caribbean. Hmm. Good to CIA also be involved in that, too. In October 1979, Slavkov and Lyudmila hosted then-Colombian President Alfonso Lopez Mitchelson, the political godfather of the Colombian cocaine trade, in a state visit, visit to Sofia. Kintec's activities in Colombia dramatically expanded. Through the Colombian foot in the door, Slavkov established good relations with governments in the Caribbean, South America, allowing Kintex to become major suppliers of heavy military equipment, including T-54 tanks to Chilean dictator Pinochet and the Sandinista Junta in Nicaragua. This would be neither the first nor the last that Kintex facilitated massive arms sales to ideological enemies of the communist state. Hmm. And coincidentally, the U.S. government also had a habit of doing the same thing. For one example, there are, you know, accord, according to a former CIA, you know, Uh, proprietor airline owners you know they were they were shipping arms to both the Contras and the Sandinistas and both the Contras and Sandinistas paid with cocaine and one one former CIA officer was interviewed by Rodney Stitch said of course, we armed both sides of that conflict in Nicaragua. How else were we going to keep? How else we're going to keep that war going? And it was also well known that the U.S. government was arming both sides in Angola during the 1970s and 1980s. This will all tie in nicely. But I like to move on and talk. about move on with the uh, topic. In 1975 on the eve of the outbreak of civil war in Lebanon the Lebanese Communist Party issued a strong protest to the Bulgarian Communist Party when Kintex provided tons of heavy weapons to the Lebanese Christian militia. Arms used to kill members of the Communist Party and allied Palestinian and Shiite fac- Muslim factions. While the DEA report suggests that the Kintex arms flow to the Falange was cut off immedi- immediately following the protest, as late as 1983, the Bulgarian Litex Bank, the financial arm of Kintex, 
still held 40% ownership of a Beirut bank otherwise owned by Shimon of the Shimon clan a former Lebanese president Camille Shimon and known to be a channel for contraband money and another in and another interesting note of all of that those same networks that were you know you know arm in all sides of the con slicked and net in Lebanon certainly played a major role in the assassination of her of Lebanese Prime Minister Harari in 2006 and a curious note at that time yes the Israeli defense forces also occu temporarily occupied southern Lebanon for a few weeks with the permission of the U.S. government. And, at, yep. and after that war was found, there was an investigation. I don't remember it right now. I don't have it with me. Said that uh, there were certain factions within the Israeli Defense Forces that were involved in, tr in the trafficking of dope. But I'll talk. But that's. I'm getting off topic here. Oh yeah, where I was going? Oh yes, it was. Yes, and speaking of contraband money, it was the Caracas branch of the Shimon Litex Bank, the Bank of Carib, that financed the 1982 Green Book Conference of Libyan Dictator Gaddafi in Venezuela, the Shimon's Pinochet and Gaddafi. All assets of the Nazi Communist International all did their arms for dope dealings with Kintex. Yes, and they all, s and uh, rather ironic, rather interesting was those same assets also worked for the s also worked for the U.S. government. But moving on on. April 27, 1984, CBS Even News and Danish Television blues a Slavkov connection to the Kintex Dope for Arms Bazaar. Slavkov was identified as the mediator between Kintex official Dynaf and a Miami, Florida based West German dealer, Peter Malak. In arms deals to yet another ideological foe of Sofia in Moscow, the Republic of South Africa. The transaction exposed by Danish television involved over a hundred thousand weapons, including rocket launchers, rifles, grenades, mines, all manufactured in the Soviet Union. Yes, and with them, yes, and those. Plants were built with American help. Get the uh, get the book uh, "The Best Enemy Money Can Buy" by Anthony Sutton. He goes into considerable detail about that. In a letter dated April 26, 1979, from Malak to Dynef, the Miami-based smuggler stated, "I can deliver the required electronic material." However, as the material is under embargo, it'll take at least three months to deliver. Payment for the consignment may be made in part in heroin or morphine base. The Danish TV broadcast credited Slavkov with the delivery of 6,000 tons of Russian military hardware to South America. Now we're going to talk about an interesting character called Henri Arsant. When Italian authorities raided the offices of Stipam International at Milan's Via Alfredi II and arrested the firm's president, Henri Arsan, a Syrian national, one of the key back channels between Britain's Dope Inc. directorate and Kintec's Bulgarian connection was blown sky high. And I would imagine the station, the CIA station chief in Rome at the time 
was talking to William Casey for a considerable amount of time. The, the Stipan headquarters occupied a good portion of a building owned by Banco Ambrosiano. Ambrosiano's Branch 18 occupied the ground floor. And the floor below Stipan contained the residence of Roberto Rossoni, deputy chairman of the bank, until uh, until his dismissal seven mu several months before the Milan raid, and days after bank president Roberto Calvi was found dead hanging from Blackfriars Bridge in London. The Stipam Brosiano connection opened up a Pandora's box leading from a propaganda do secret Masonic lodge founded by Italian ex Gestapo spy Lysio Shelley back to London where the Duke of Kent presided over the Grandmother Lodge of Scottish Rite Freemasonry. The same lodge that directed Britain's opium war policy for two centuries. And that, and that chartered P2 predecessor Lodge Mazzini's propaganda Uno. When Judge Porlermo's raiding party completed a search of Via Alfredi Du, they carted off three suitcases filled with documents. The documents consisted mostly of telex transactions during the 16 years of Stipam's activities. Message sent by Arson to and from Milan, New, y Milan, New York, Istanbul, Beirut, Damascus, and Saigon. Through them, the tight links between Stipam and, and um, Ambrosiano were reportedly reconstructed. We shall return shortly to the Ambrosiana propaganda due and London connections of Stipam's Henri Arson. It is first necessary to tug further at the Bulgarian string we began unraveling with the 1968 fountain of kin tax. According to the already cited DEA document, by no later than 1971, Henri Arsant had been provided with a rent-free villa in Sofia, courtesy of kin tax. A known and respected trafficker in morphine, Arson had been one of the principal dope suppliers to the notorious French Connection. By the mid-1970s, however, the French Connection was no more. Many of the key players, former Vichyites, integrated into Francois Genot's post-war Nazi international through the Union Corsay and the OAS were either dead or behind bars. Christian David, for example, the number two man in the Montevito centered Golden Triangle heroin ring was in prison in Lavenworth, Kansas. Yeah, curious place <coughs> to be imprisoned. He had been identified as the organizer of the 1960s assassination of Moroccan opposition leader Ben Barca, a job carried out by the Gino Nazi International. By 1975, Arson was in the middle of a regroupment of the heroin connection in the company of another Milan based Syrian national, Salah Alden Wakis. Wakis was the designated Milan representative of the Turkish Mafia working in league with an old French connection partner of Arsene Syndicate boss, Gerlando Alberte. Hmm. Does he, one wonders whether the modern day, the present organization, the American Turkish Council, has connection to all of this. According to Judge Perlermo, the Al Bertie Wakis ring sorted out drugs entering Italy from Turkey using money that often came from kidnappings and other criminal activities. 
and deposit in funds and accounts in banks in New York, Zurich, Frankfurt, and London. Alberti deposited the drugs in the Trento, Bolzano, Verona Triangle. From there was shipped to Palermo, Sicily for refinement and transshipment. Stipam was then in charge of procuring the shipping and of sh procuring and shipping the weapons requested as payment for the drugs to terrorist groups in Turkey, Lebanon, and elsewhere. Ironically, among the guerrilla movements receiving Stipam's arms deliveries were Afghanistan rebel groups fighting against Soviet troops. According to the DEA, those arms shipments be between 1975 to 1982 were made under the protection of Bulgarian state security. For that service, Stipam deposited tens of millions of dollars in narcotics revenues with kin tax. The identification of Stipam and Arsan as a nodal point of this arms drugs for arms traffic was made possible according to the arresting Italian magistrates thanks in part to the cooperation of Turkish authorities. The November 23, 1984 Italian arrests were preceded by the arrests in Turkey of three individuals said to direct the Turkish side of the drug flow. Not one, not one gram of heroin left Turkey that was not under the control of this specific mafia, said Judge Palermo at his press conference on November 24th. The individuals arrested were Kasakis, Mustafa, Hahir Hassan, and Sil Hussein. This troika had dispatched Salah al Wakas to Milan. The Arsal Wakis arms for narcotics deal were arranged in a string of second-rate hotels around Milan's central tra train station and in cafes, bars, and hotels in Sofia, Bulgaria. The Berlin Cafe, the Japan Hotel, and the Hotel Vitosha were all named by Judge Palermo as safe spots in Sofia. Palermo himself traveled on several occasions to Sofia to personally observe dope for arms transactions at the Berlin Cafe. And now, and now, yes, and now another character enters into the picture. Mohamed Ali Yadka. Had Judge Palermo been on one of his culvert forays to Sofia in the summer of 1980, he might have stumbled upon a neo-Nazi assassin and drug mule for the Turkish Mafia who discreetly checked into the Hotel Vitosha. The Turk, a member of the right-wing extremist paramilitary group Grey Wolves of Colonel Alparslan Turkis, major CIA and a major CIA and NATO asset, had escaped in November 1979 from Cartel Maltop military prison in Turkey where he had been awaiting execution for the assassination of Ibdi Apeki, editor of the leftist Turkish magazine Milliyet. One day after his escape arranged by or Oral Salik, Grey Wolf's hitman, Mohamed Ali Yadka, sent a letter to Milliet threatening that if Pope John Paul II visit, but, uh, bah, that if Pope John Paul II's visit to Istanbul were not called off, I will definitely kill the commander Pope. As events would later show, Adka's summer 1980 arrival in Sofia singled the activation of the assassination plot that culminated on May 13, 1981, with Adka's near-fatal shooting of the Pope in St. Peter's Square. Two things stand out about Adka's meeting 
meetings at the Hotel Fatosha during the summer of 1981. Adka entered Bulgaria according to the DEA on a phony Indian passport in a Sikh named Yajinder Singh. The fact that Akka was traveling as a Sikh raises perplexing questions. Was there also a Bulgarian connection to the more recent brutal assassination of Indian Prime Minister Indira Gandhi by Sikh members of her own security force? Circumstantial evidence points to su just such a threat, a threat that leads us back to the Anglo-Soviet Dope Inc. Alliance and to the Nazi International. According to reports published in the Indian media at the time of Indian Army siege of the Indian Army siege of the Golden Temple, the Sikh shrine which had been taken over by fanatical fundamentalist Sikhs, some of the Sikh terrorists were believed to have fled the city of Amritsar aboard Bulgarian Airlines planes. The Punjab region which the Sikh fanatic seek to turn into a separate independent quasi-religious state of Khalistan has been the center of opium production in India. The places the Sikh insurgents that places the Sikh insurgents in the orbit of the Golden Crescent opium routes known to be part of the Bulgarian connection. Even more to the point, Jad Jagjit Sin Chahan, head of the Khalistan separatist movement and self-avowed author of the Gandhi assassination, is a shared der was a shared derivative derivative asset of the Soviet intelligence service, British secret intelligence, and the Swiss Nazi International, and most certainly the CIA. Until late 1968, the year Kintex was formed, Chohan was finance minister of the Punjab province. At that time, following a series of pilgrimages to Tashkent in the Soviet Union, the center of the KGB's Islamic division, Chohan resigned his post with the Indian government and began agitating for an independent Khalistan. Since that day, Chahan, who shifted the center of the Khalistani movement to London, has also become an asset of British subject Richard Hauser, an Australian by birth. Hauser was recruited to the British Special Operations Executive during World War II, serving as a part of the SOE team sent to Milan, Italy, amid immediately after the city's liberation of Allied forces. As part of the Milan team, Hauser was in, uh, in on the ground for what later emerged as the P2 connection into London. Hauser today is an executive of the Francois Gino's linked Society for Endangered Peoples, the principal logistics and recruitment support organization for over 200 separatist and integrist movements worldwide. As we shall see, the Endangered Peoples Movement constitutes That constitutes the backbone of the Golden Crescent heroin underground. Is there a Bulgarian connection to the assassination of Mrs. Gandhi that would suggest a link to, Ad to the Adka attempt on the life of the Pope? Perhaps Jajit Singh Chahan's American connection runs through a dubious character named John Speller, nominally an asset of U.S. intelligence services. A self-described Anglophile and Russophile, a second-generation product of Jacob Reese's financial circles of lower Manhattan, 
spell or boasts of an e- of extremely close ties into the East Block, principally through the Russian Orthodox Church's espionage window into the West, the monasteries at Mount Athos. According to eyewitness reports, Speller's Mount Athos channels place him in close association with the Bulgarian Orthodox Church and the circles that gathered around the late Luyanila Zivkova. According to the DEA, in a late 1982 confession to Italian authorities, at Atka stated that in the summer of 1980, he was offered 3 million German marks by Bakir Sel- Selank to kill the Pope. The assassination weapon was provided by Orwell Selick, the Grey Wolf's terrorist to arrange Atka's prison break. On November 25, 1982, Italian magistrate Martella indicted both Selick and Selick for the assassination plot along with Balkan Tours official Antonov. According to Turkish government records, Selink was a mafia boss in the Turkish mafia sought by Turkish officials since 1977 for fiscal fraud and illegal flight capital. Selink owned a fleet of ships registered in Panama, Yes, in which the CIA has considerable control and and a string of hotels believed to be safe houses for the dope for arms traffickers. In March 1981, one of Selink's top smugglers, Abuzer Ugerlu, turned himself in to Turkish authorities by his own admission, Ugerlu was an employee of Kintex functioning as a liaison between the Turkish Mafia heroin connection and the Milan-based Dipam International and Syndicate Chief Chief Ten Ah, fuck, I'm having trouble speaking today. And Syndicate Chieftain Gerlando Alberte. Among a girl whose assignments was the delivery of bribes to former Turkish customs ministers in order to secure deployment of corrupt customs officials to post along the Turk Bulgarian Turkish border, assuring the safe passage of arms and narcotics. Using the loopholes in the TIR European wide trucking convention, the complicity of customs officials at the Turkey-Bulgaria border assured the contraband safe transit to final destinations in continental Western Europe. Ergerlu's Ako- boss, Salank Atka's host in Sofia during the summer of 1980, has been singled out by George Martella as the direct liaison between Atka and the authors of Papalus of the papal assassination plot. According to the already cited DEA document, Selink was reportedly directing, the reporting directly to a KDS official named Marianov. The profile of the dope for guns mafia, the assassination arm of dope Inc. is not complete until we have directed our attention West to some of the leading partners of the Bulgarian connection. For our purposes here, two other events will sufficiently highlight that point. And as a side note, that could probably also, yep, the Stipam International could also be one of the reasons for the elimination of Slobodan Milosevic. You know, far. If arms were going through Bulgaria, the Yugoslav government would have had to have known about it. And probably was one of the reasons that the CIA helped put Milosevic into power in the first place. And another another interesting note 
was that Milosevic was captured by American and British authorities to stand trial at The Hague at around July 2001, a few months before 9-11. You know, was he about to, uh, one wonders, was, you know, if Milosevic was to talk, would he have blown the you know, would he have blown the cynical east west collusion sky high and all its terrorist networks and assassination squads and would he have also blown the lid to the machinations and the creation of conditions that led directly to 911 i will talk more about that at another audio I'm moving on. Yes, the oil, yep, oil for guns. One of the most revealing of the dope for guns transactions pulled off by Stai Pam brings us full circle back to the landlords of Henri Arsal at Via, Via Alfredi Du or Two, Banco Abrosiano and its chairman Roberto Calvi. Until the moment of his Freemasonic ritualistic death at London's Black Fri- at, at London's Blackfriars Bridge, Calvi had been one of the key financiers of the P2 Lodge. While the lodge membership encompasses some rather complex and contradictory networks, the role of Calvi, Lysio, Shelley and a handful of key players is relatively clear. Italian police files have placed Calvi and Abrosiano as the funding conduit to a Red Brigade's hit team that assassinated a string of top police officials and magistrates in the Milan area when these officials began to turn up evidence linking the P2 Lodge to the drug trade and to a number of aborted neo-fascist coup plots, including the 1969 Borghese coup attempt and the mid-1970s Rosa di Vente plot, which also involved the massive outbreak of neo-fascist and anarchist blind terrorism known as the politics of tension. One would, w- one would wonder... Why Mike? While well, Michael Ledeen wasn't too, wasn't too anxious for people to investigate that P2 scandal, and why he decla- why he called, yes, the U.S. military's training manual a KGB forgery. That probably was that probably was true. However, Lysio Shelley in an interview. Ah. also said that uh the C- uh, that the CIA gave me that manual uh, which makes one wonder whether the C- whether the document was actually authentic or this rather the CIA was in the habit of handing out forged KGB documents at the time of the US embassy hostage siege in Tehran, Stipam International facilitated a major arms for oil deal between the Israeli government and the Khomeini regime. In exchange for Israeli arms desperately needed by Khomeini to prosecute the war in Iraq, Khomeini provided a flow of Iranian oil to Israel at rock bottom prices. The oil was delivered to Israel through the full cooperation of British Petroleum and Royal Dutch Shell, in effect the Middle East division of the old British East India crowd or the British East India Company crowd. And that probably explains why the British had the relatively easier task of guarding Basra during the current occupation of Iraq. But that's a topic for another discussion. The intermediary 
for this secret deal between British Petroleum, Royal Dutch Shell, Israel, and Khomeini was Banco Brosiano. According to Middle East Magazine and the Italian Daily La Repubblica, the specific Abrosiano cutout was a Swiss concerned dry cook, dry coat driving and financial company owned by the Hans brothers and Albert Kuhns, Roberto's Calvi Swiss business agent. And, but who did Kuhns, Calvi, the Hans brothers, British Petroleum et al. turned to in order to secure the deliveries. According to several European sources, they turned to Stefano Della Dele, Chaye, Chaye, the, Na, yeah, the Nazi International In House Murder Inc. executive for Europe and Latin America, Del Chaye fled his native Italy in 1969 after being condemned for the Piazza Fontana massacre in Milan, which took dozens of lives. That bombing, which was the trigger of the aborted Borghese coup attempt, was carried out by Ordinero or the Black Order, the Italian terrorist arm of the revived Nazi International. And, of course, they had connections to the CIA and NATO. You see, yep, you see where the American and Russian, how the American and Russian intelligence groups all interact. Named as a secret member of the Alpina Lodge of Switzerland, reported to be the control and inner elite behind P2, Della Chaye was at a meeting at, of the Alpina Lodge somewhere in Uruguay in early 1980 in which he was ordered to carry out a bombing attack against a train station in Bologna. That bombing claimed over 80 lives and over 200 injuries. Swiss publications have named P2 founder Lissio Shelley, Club of Rome founder Aurelio Pecci, and former U.S. Secretary of State Henry Kissinger as leading members of the Alpina Lodge. Shelley was reportedly the person who directed Della Chayes to carry out the Bologna attack. At the time of the 1980 Bologna massacre, Della Chaye was based in Bolivia and joined the protection and patronage of the cocaine colonels and a crew of ex-Nazis, including Klaus Barbie. When the colonels fell in October 1982, Della Chaye barely escaped capture and extradition to Italy. His fellow Nazi international fugitives, Klaus Barbi and Pierre Luigi Paglia, 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 were grabbed by the new Bolivian authorities, backed by the U.S. and Italian anti drug officials, and extradited to Paris and Rome. At the last report, Della Chaye was still in hiding in South America. During 1983, he spent time in Peru training the Sendero Luminoso Maoist terrorist band and reportedly serving as a bridge between the terrorists and the international dope syndicate. It was Della Chaye who was blamed by Italian and Peruvian law enforcement officials as the mastermind of the Sendero Luminoso sabotage and terror campaigns against the capital city of Lima. Della Chaye, in keeping with the Sendero cohorts, now pro proclaims himself to be a devout worshipper. Pro pro at time, proclaimed himself to be a devout worshipper of both Adolf Hitler and Mao Zedong, which making it an effect so yeah in the situation concerning Peru during the 1980s the CIA was in effect arming and tr providing logistics for Sendero Luminoso 
and even more interesting it was it was the soviet union through q through the cuban military i was providing advice and training to the peruvian government and there were per- Peruvian government officials that were also selling stinger missile American stinger missiles to the Sendero Luminoso. So on to the Sendero Luminoso. An interesting book to read is called The Prophets of War by Ari Ben Manash. She goes into greater detail about this. How we go it with another so called right wing terrorist group called tradition family and pa- and property or tradition family and patricide on may 13th 1982 one year to the day after Mohammed ali atka's attempted assassination of pope john paul ii in saint peter's square a spanish priest linked to a fanatical right-wing movement within the Catholic Church attempted to stab the Pope to death as he conducted a mass over the statue of the Virgin of Fatima in Portugal. Juan Fernandez Crone, a follower of the fundamentalist Archbishop Lefebvre, Lefebvre and an agent of the tradition, family and property quasi-terrorist group had been groomed for nearly a year as Adka had been to assassinate the pontiff on a most symbolic occasion, the celebration of the third vision of Fatima, a vision that proclaims the re-Christianization of Russia and the crown of Moscow as the third Rome seat of the world empire. This vision, which to Russian believers signifies Russian world domination, has been dramatically put forward in the Western Church as a portent of the end of the communist rule in Russia. In fact, the fact that in both 1981 and 1982, fanatical assassins tried to murder Pope John Paul II on the same day may shed some light on the interface between cultist networks of the East and West, whom we have seen functioning as architects of dope ink. We have traced the trail of assassin Mohammed Ali Atka through the fringes of the t- Turkish neo-Nazi movement into the service of Bulgarian secret police agents and the heroin syndicate. In the case of Father Crone, the trail takes us back to familiar territory, the Portuguese royal family of Braganza, after training at the Lefebvrest Monastery in Regensburg, Germany. Crone was drawn into the TFP, traveling throughout Spain, Portugal, and Brazil. Crone was provided with terrorist training, and weapons and logistics back up through the TFP group. The golden back to the Golden Crescent. In nineteen seventy eight in in nineteen seventy eight, Ayatollah Khomeini was still living in exile in Paris. The Soviet Union had not tried to absorb Afghanistan in its territorial grab bag no, instead, instead, it's the Americans are that are it's the American and NATO forces that are occupying it. The Indian subcontinent had not yet been racked with separatist intrigues. The center of world opium production was still in the Golden Triangle region of Southeast Asia. Within two years, dramatic changes occurred. According to the best available statistics, as the intergrist insurgency swept through Western Asia, a new opium production zone encompassing the mountainous regions of Khomeini's Iran, Russian-occupied Afghanistan, and an increasingly fragmented Pakistan had taken a huge share of the world market. According to Drug Enforcement Administration estimates generated by a special investigative program, 
Project Cerebus, OP, Opium Production in the Golden Crescent by 1980 had reached a level of 500 tons per year, nearly triple the production of the Southeast Asian region. Instead of the old Canadian Pacific and charting Matheson routes out of the Golden Triangle, a new heroin trail was suddenly being cut from Iran, Afghanistan, Pakistan, into Turkey, through the Iron Curtain into Bulgaria, Yugoslavia, and back in the Western Europe at the Balzano Venice Corridor in northern Italy. And at every step along the way, the new warlords of the Society for Endangered Peoples, the Nazi Francois Ginot and the Bulgarian Connection were running the show on the ground. Thus, when Italian authorities stormed into the Verona Red Brigade safe houses where the terrorists were holding Nate, told General James Dozier, on January 28, 1982, it was on the basis of raids of heroin refineries in nearby towns that the location of the kidnappers was determined. It seems that the Red Brigade's captors were part of a heroin connection running a string of laboratories in the shadows and NATO installations in Italy in partnership with Ordi Nuovo black international terrorists and the mafiosi and uh, of, of the Camorra and all of course the leading members of all the globalist criminal syndicate yes I've talked for long enough you have yourself a good day I'm signing off peace um, how was your day today, John DCQR, reporting from somewhere in Toronto, Canada? And today I'm going to do a second chapter of the Nazi Communist International called Stipem, the Real Bulgarian Connection. What I'm going, yep, what I'm going to do in this series is not necessarily in chronological order, but I will continue to post topics on the whole thing now let us start on tuesday november 23rd 1982 an international law enforcement team under the directions of italian magistrate carlo palermo of trento carried out a series of arrests of individuals responsible for running the milan center of the biggest arms dealing network in the world Shades of Iran, Contra, and the current bank scandal involving the Bank of America bran branch, R Wachovia. According to Palermo and other Trento magistrates at a press conference the following day, the eight arrests marked a dramatic climax of a three-year investigation during which it was discovered that the Milan-based firm of Stipam International Transports was the channel through which huge quantities of arms were shipped to bands of terrorists and integrists throughout the Middle East. The standard form of barter for the arms, hashish, heroin, and other drugs principally produced in the Golden Crescent region of Iran, Pakistan, and Afghanistan. Yes, you know, it's pretty much the same thing that's happening today. From its inception, Kintex went about implementing its criminal mandate with a degree of thoroughness and ruthlessness that marks the East Bloc security services. Lists of sanctioned clients in the West, armed smuggling rings, narcotics trafficking organizations, and terrorist cells banning the neo-Nazi right to the anarchist left were accumulated and screened. Preferred safe locations, usually nondescript hotels and bars in Sofia, were established as havens for black market transactions. Evidence suggests that Kintex's 
worldwide dope for arms dealing. We run top down through a chain of command running back to the Dershinsky Ders Square headquarters of the Soviet KGB in Moscow. And you could probably m trace it down the Langley in Virginia, which I will talk about shortly. Kintex reportedly fell under the jurisdiction of the first directorate of the KDS, headed by G Colonel General Grigor Shopov. The first directorate was responsible for all foreign and domestic intelligence operations, including terrorism. A. A candidate member of the Bulgarian Communist Party Central Committee, Radislav Tortorov, was appointed Kin Texas Director General. According to accounts of a drug smuggler working for Kin Tex, the boss of contraband operations was a high ranking KDS officer named Terziev, whose deputy Colonel Ivan. The history of the case. An undated report issued in the fall of 1984 by the chief of the strategic intelligence section of the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration provides a history of the Stipam International Transport case and the plot to assassinate Pope John Paul II. According to the document, the involvement of the People's Republic of Bulgaria in international narcotics trafficking, a high-level defector from the Bulgarian State Security Service, KDS, codenamed Sherdlev, S-V-E-R-D-L-E-V, had told U.S. intelligence of a 1967 meeting in Moscow, the Warsaw Pact Security Service chiefs to develop plans to exploit and hasten the inherent corruption of Western society. It isn't that, you know, the West needed much help. Look at the current financial mess today. A subsequent meeting of KDS officials in Sofia, Bulgaria, established a three-year action plan to implement the exploitation. According to a... Sh uh, sh uh, sh uh, sh uh, I'm having trouble pronouncing. Sir, Sir Lev, a KDS directive was issued on June 1970 assessing the status of the East Bloc plan to destabilize Western society through the narcotics trade. How would this Moscow ordered opium war be carried out? According to the same DEA document in 1968, through the Bulgarian government funded Kintex, the official import export agency of the communist state. Of course it would late that that company would later be called Globus. But let's you know dis yeah, let's discuss the detail in the report. Kintex is structured as an umbrella organization which orchestrates the trafficking of contraband through Bulgaria. Kintex had, has been identified as the principal narcotics and weapons shipping agency. Other government agencies have been identified as operating in conjunction with Kintex, prim primarily as distribution outlets. Each of these agencies reportedly is headed by Bulgarian state security officials. Hmm. The Americans have the same cut, you know, cut out organization that involves arms and dope. It just happens to be called Israel. But moving on. Among the distribution outlets identified by the U.S., Turkish, and Italian authorities were Intercommerce, DAP EK, and Balkan Tours. Balkan Tours, the official Bulgarian news bureau, gained instant notoriety on, sep on November 25, 1982, just two days after the Stipam raid, when Sergei Avant 
Ivanov Antonov, an official of Bulgarian Airlines, posted as the deputy director of, of the Office of Balkan Tours in Rome, was arrested by Italian magistrate Alerio Martella and charged in the conspiracy to assassinate the Pope. By the time the dust had settled on the stipend bust, more had been unearthed than even a multi-billion dollar arms for dopering. At the very heart of the Stipam operation was the arrangement between top government and family channels in the east and west to share in the revenues and political power of Dope Inc., as the di- as the direct result of the Stipam bust, the Bulgarian connection to the assassination plot against Pope John Paul II was demonstrated. As a result of the Stipam revelations, the marriage between the ruling families of the East, such as Bulgaria's Zivkov dynasty and the oligarchical Fondi of Central Europe and Britain, and of course, America, such as the Braganza clan and the Duke of Kent, most disgustingly flaunted in the black market bazaars of Varna, Eastern Bull, Sofia, Palermo, Trieste, and London, weaving in and out of this mosaic of guns, narcotics and political assassins, we find the ever-present shadow of the Nazi Communist International. And another person that should be mentioned and note is Larry Abramoff. He was involved, not only was involved in the Stipam International Transport, but he was also involved in all the other arms and drug scandals which some of it came out under the guise of Plame Gate, and Abramoff was convicted in around 2006, but that's a topic for another discussion.